An outstanding transmitter of patristic teaching in the 20th century Serbia, St. Justin, lived from 1894 to 1979, was a beloved spiritual father, fiery preacher, and prolific author. Bold in his confession of the faith before communist authorities, he had no qualms about condemning Marxism's cherished doctrine of evolutionism. In his work The Orthodox Church and Ecumenism, he included the above-quoted passages of his spiritual father, Saint Nikolai of Serbia, about how sad and shameful it is for unbelievers to call apes their ancestors. In the same work he wrote, much in the spirit of Saint Theophan and the Recluse in the 19th century, concerning how people can be deceived while pursuing knowledge in the sciences, if they are not grounded in faith in God and do not submit their reason to such saving faith. The infallible apostle advises and directs Christians, be not carried away with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, Hebrews 13 verse 9. More often involuntarily than voluntarily, people deceive themselves with their various sciences. They deceive themselves by sin, which has become their intellectual power through habit, and has become so natural and human that it is not felt or recognized by those guided and led by sin in their reasonings and sciences. Through sin we come to the creator of sin, the principal logic of sin, the devil. He has countless and very skillful and subtle ways of infiltrating his lies into the human sciences, alienating man from the only true God. Moreover, he introduces all his wiles by the logic of sin into the human sciences, artfully deceiving man with his blasphemy so that they in their self-delusion, deny God, reject God, are blind to God, or fence themselves off from him. In a letter to an orthodox student of theology, St. Justin wrote at length on what he thought of the modern scientific theory of evolution. In answer to the student's question on whether evolutionism is compatible with orthodox theology, St. Justin immediately began by considering the soteriological implications. As in all writing and sermons, he focused his attention on the central fact of human and cosmic existence, that God became man so that man might become God. To the student he explained that evolutionism undermines every aspect of the orthodox doctrine of salvation, the original nature and calling of man, the corruption of human nature through sin, death as the consequence of sin, and the transformation, perfection and deification of man through the Godman Jesus Christ, which he calls the true evolution. Here is the letter in full. My dearest child in God, you would like me to answer the question posed by the theological section. Can the scientific understanding of the evolution of the world and man ever be reconciled with traditional orthodox perception and knowledge? What is the judgment of the Holy Fathers in this regard? Is there a need at all for reconciliation? In short, the New Testament anthropology stands and falls with the Old Testament anthropology. The entire gospel of the New Testament, man, the icon of God, the entire gospel of the New Testament, the Godman, the icon of man, heavenly, divine, immortal, everlasting, and unchangeably human is the icon of God and man, godlikeness. The godlikeness of the human being has been scarred by man's voluntarily sin, his pact with the devil through sin, and death as the consequence of sin. For this reason, God became man to renew his image, which had been corrupted through sin. God became man and remained in the human world as God-man as the church in order to give man, who is in the image of God all the necessary means, the holy mysteries and holy virtues in the divine, human body of the church, by which God-like man would be elevated unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 13. This is the divine human evolution of man, this is the divine human anthropology. The aim of man's God-like being, to gradually become perfect like God the Father, to become God by grace, God-man by grace, to become divine, to become divine human, to become Christ-like, to become three in. According to the Holy Fathers, God became man so that man might become God. On the other hand, the so-called scientific anthropologies do not recognize at all the godlikeness of the human being. Hence, they deny a priori the divine human evolution of man's being. 
If man is not the icon of God, then the Godman and his gospel are unnatural for such a man, and also mechanical and unachievable. The Godman Christ is a robot and creates robots. The Godman is an oppressor, because he forcibly wants to transform man into a being perfect like God. Actually, this is an unviable utopia, an illusion, and an unreachable ideal. In the final instance, it is a fairy tale and a fable. Furthermore, if man is not a godlike being, then the godman is superfluous. For scientific theories of evolution acknowledge either sin nor the savior from sin. In this earthly world of evolution everything is natural. There is no place for sin. That is why it is ridiculous to speak of the savior and of salvation from sin. In the final analysis everything is natural, sin, evil, and death. For if everything comes and is given to man through evolution then what is it that has to be saved in man, inasmuch as there is nothing immortal and imperishable in him, but all is from the earth, earthly, earthen, and as such is transitory, corruptible, and mortal. It is noteworthy that in saying that evolutionism denies the godlikeness of man, Saint Justin is implicitly rejecting the theistic evolutionary notion that God made man into the image of God at some point, in his ascent from the apes. Recognizing that evolutionism originated in denial of Christian revelation, St. Justin did not even bother to consider such an artificial melding of two opposing worldviews. In such a world of evolution there is no place for the Church, which is the body of the Godman Christ. The theology which bases its anthropology on the theory of scientific evolution is nothing but an anthropology without man. If man is not immortal, everlasting, and a divine human icon of God, then all theologies and all anthropologies are senseless and tragic comedies. Your father, Justin. <laughs>